Yeah. So, Carl and Andrea, we're just yeah. setting the calendar tonight. Um, I don't I know understand. if there's anything useful for you, you know, other than that. Linda. Um, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Carol. Oh, shoot. I should be ready. And Michael. Let's just schedule. All right. So um, here we are again. And as I was saying earlier, this is going to be my last year as chair. So somebody needs to so, step up. Uh, Sally, I, I just feel as a member, I'd, I'd like to make this official. And uh, I. When we started, we would uh, do that officially. So I, I think it's generally a one year term and I'd like to officially nominate you to serve one more term. And Does that need with that nomination, agenda? I'd just like to, yeah. on behalf of everybody, thank you for all the years that you've held this together. So thank you very much. It's been 20 years. And I, I know you're reluctant, to, you've got a lot going on, but if you could, I think we're I will, I will. in the season right now and yeah. it would be disruptive to try to have somebody new. So, but I think- And nobody said- I think second. we should do what we can as a group to help you knowing how busy your schedule is. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'll second Tom's motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> okay. So uh, following up on this, uh, I'm wondering. That, that was, Tom, that was Sally for another one year term, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Following up on this, Linda suggested that we might nominate a clerk just prior to this meeting that could perhaps take some of the load off of you. Is that something you'd like to suggest, uh, Linda? Um, uh, yes, <laughs> I would like to suggest it, even if we don't have a candidate at this point, but I just think it would be something to put into the process. Uh, yeah. I don't see anybody. Uh... Yeah, me either. I didn't see anybody raise hands when I said I should want to do it this year either. So, well, you know, I mean, the fact is that we're all graying, frankly, and I, you know, and we need younger people. We've had some younger people here and there, but they have fallen by the wayside. Um, I think that's true of all the boards. Um, I, everybody needs younger people. We need the next generation to step up or there's not going to be anything in years. We, we can't, we old people can't be the only ones who. Carol's only 45. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've known Carol for a really long time. I know she's older than 45. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what the future of our town and the volunteer government's going to be if we don't get some younger people stepping up and saying we want to be a part of this. It's just not going to work. What what open um, seats do we have right now? I don't know? know because that's I think the solicitation of younger people will be filling those seats. Right. I, I don't know what we have because nobody said I don't want to do it again except me. <laughs> Okay, so every committee is now represented that's an arm of... It was up until okay. last year. Last year, every, every um, everyone, there was a slot. Everyone had filled the so slot. Right yeah. now, we have two people on the select board. No? Well, we have two select board members. I think it's Carol and me. Okay, because on the board, uh, uh, on the site, you're not listed as the select board rep. Oh. We'll have to fix that. I believe I was nominated and appointed last year. All right. Okay. Okay. So, so that's the two selectmen picks. Yeah. Isn't there another person picked by the selectmen? And uh, pardon? There's isn't there another individual that's picked by the selectmen? Two Normally ordinary citizens. The select board picks two people. Okay. Right. So we have two for the select board. And we have the board of assessors. Assessors. Board, I believe. Historic. Historic preservation. 
J is finance. J is finance. Now on the site for a housing, we still have Chuck Gillette. Right. But uh, I think the site hasn't been updated. Apparently, and, uh, Ann Robinowitz. Ann is serving for the yeah yeah party, yeah. Right. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Okay. Um. So I think we're uh, we missing. We have assessors. Is Gary? No, I'm assessors. Gary is Gary is. Gary is um, Planning board. Planning board. So I think. Are you talking about the chairs, Sally? No, we're talking no, about members. The members, the members from the each one of the boards who serves on the their. Oh, oh, that serves here. Yes. Where is Gary? I don't know. He said he was coming. Maybe he's. Um, he hasn't logged in yet. I don't know. He said he was coming. I, I think he does have an illness in the family. So they... Oh, dear. Oh, well. Um, um, uh, the other is Parks and Recreation. Oh, yeah. That's so been Steve, three... T Steve Knopf, and he has been a sporadic attendee, but he has been um, the one who is currently designated. Uh, I suggest we reach out to them ask that we have somebody who will be uh, right well they only have three people to choose from so what's the name of the one on parks and rec uh nicole farrow yeah nicole. she's younger you'll love it yay yay all right well i'll i'll get in touch with Steve and make sure that he's mm. still on board but she can zoom um all right that's up to them i mean so you're that. still taking minutes I'm still taking minutes. Okay. I'll do clerk if I don't have to take minutes. Mm. <laughs> I think that, I, that's one of the five years we knew each other. Another thing I'll just mention again, we can use administrative funds. We can pick somebody to, to fill that post. Yeah, that's and it's what I think. Critical and other communications that. I think we should ask Michael Canales because I think we have funds to make an official person who knows what they're doing instead of me. Well, I just to uh, set the record here, uh, in our first year, way back when, when Sally and Linda and I, the three original people here, we actually hired somebody to- uh, That's what Linda just said. Okay. Yeah, we hired two different okay. people. So I think we can do so it's that. It's perfectly yeah. legal. We just have to, uh, maybe we don't have to discuss it. You guys want to do that, I'll, I can It's up to Sally. <laughs> Sally, do you want to do that? Um, then I have to be responsible to somebody, which may be harder for me. Than Other way around. They have to just be responsible to you. So, no, no, that's the way um, it works. But there's a lot of transmission of stuff that has to be done. Oh, Gary, okay, wait. And Sad, he's not able to attend today, he said. Mm -hmm. Gary, family emergency. It's family. Right. It's family. Okay, well, I hope everything turns out okay. We why don't we uh, empower Sally and Michael to make the decision together? And, you know, uh, wherever they come out, I'm comfortable. So I make a motion we uh, designate uh, Sally and Michael to make the decision about whether we need uh, paid staff. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And if you just need a dumb go for you, can call me. <laughs> I don't know that that's ever how I would have described you as a well, but, but, but here's your opportunity. So, uh, if we're going to have a paid staff person, uh, I'd like to suggest that we provide a little more details on the town site. Uh, basically, the town site just refers people to Article 21 of the bylaws. But in my opinion, we need something a little bit more uh, user friendly that goes through the steps of the kinds of grants we give that lists the grants that we've given that can be something more interactive. So I know Linda has, you know, all of us are getting older and we're really busy, but if we're gonna hire somebody, uh, in my opinion, that would be something that would be well worth it. Well, they can find all the information about all the grants we've given on the CPA site, the 
I said user friendly. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's well, that. If there's a, a, a correct connection on the town website to that, it's still the most comprehensive thing because the states put it together. She's right. And you can see what other towns are doing too. So, Linda, oh, you're right. We'll need that identification with an actual project to make them understand what they could. Okay apply for and I, I might just suggest that i think michael's had conversations with our vendor about features that we may want to look at in the future and i would suggest that we allow him to include uh you know more user-friendly uh cpc presentation as part of that effort okay um i'll talk to you about that yeah. We can, but I, th I think that, that it's a good suggestion to um, have the link to the Mass State CBC uh, on our website. I think that <laughs> I think that would be helpful. Um, and then, and of course, and of course, anyone who is interested can always look in the town reports because the town reports list everything that we've funded. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> if that's going to happen, so well, again, I, I, you know, I mean, everybody gets one. All they have to do is open it up to community preservation, and it says we funded this, 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 and this, and you know, so this, they can find it. If, if I can speak about just for a moment about something to consider about your calendar that you set. Well, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. Is, is there a Yes. Just bring up something. You yep. want me to step up so we can. So, one of the things I, I did go out and take a look at what other places do. One thing we might want to consider doing, and I'm just throwing this out here, is it won't fit for this year, but we get people calling asking, when's the application? When can we put it? Instead of meeting each year to establish a uh, timeline, what about designating a timeline such as from december 1st through january 15th of every year is the application period for cpc funds mm -hmm. therefore instead of having that meeting, we would always be able to tell groups effective december 1st the application will be available you can fill it out we can put the support documents or whatever else needs to be there and then instead of meeting the established deadline where people are trying to say, well, we're never sure which year when the deadlines happen, that would take care of it going forward after this year. So I, I think it's just something I wanted to throw out there. If you're using a standard, if we standardize the form and each year we're just really tweaking the form for the dates that we just, we could do that administratively at town hall instead of the volunteer board here. Uh, and we can have it available, like I said, every year, December 1st, run it through the 15th. And then you guys would just set the dates for your meetings to review the applicants instead of worrying about some of this administrative function. So, so I just wanted to throw that out. To what is the, with the review required by town council of the various, uh, you know, uh, uh, grants that we make or whatever recommendations we make, what's the latest the deadline could be to accept applications in your opinion, like February 1st? So we ideally would like to have everything set by the end of March. So right, I think if you're, if you were, if applications were to come in and then be sent to legal counsel by the end of the month of February, that would give them enough time to review and then get back and then get it on the warrant for town meeting. So if 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 the deadline was February first, we have to work back from town meeting Sorry. deadline for having the the projects that are going to be requested to the town. We have to work back from when the deadline is to get it into the warrant. And so we work, we usually, we have, um, we have a timeline where the applicants must have their, um, have their applications in and then we usually have about a week and a half that it goes to town council to look at and review. Then it comes back to us, and we um, and then we have we also have a public meeting in there with the where the people who are the applicants can come in and ask questions and and give us a brief summary of what they're thinking about doing, um, so that we can say uh, no, 
or we can say, oh, that's great. And, you know, you might want to tweak it this way, or you need to think about it this way, or something like that. There are some things that are not going to be permittable, and we have, we can usually tell them that at the, before they get into the whole application process. And then we can, and then we can go forward, and then we have a deadline, which is always a Friday at noon, and only once in the 20 years that I've been involved has anyone ever missed that deadline, um, which was really sad and unfortunate. But just it, we we couldn't. Uh, Great Barrington had thrown out a couple of of applications because people had missed the deadline. So I felt pretty strongly that, in spite of the fact that I felt really sad about it, we had to hold that line. Um, so we have a deadline which um, we're going to set tonight for when the applications have to be in. It's usually a Friday at noon, and it oftentimes falls on a most inconvenient time for me. Uh, and I come in and I look at, I, I get take all, because they're, they're required to send us one, um, one digital copy and 10, um, uh, 10 hard copies. And one copy, if they're applying under uh, historic preservation, that, and one copy specifically to go to Linda and crowd. Um, and I, in all these years, I could never remember which one is historical commission and which is the other one. So please don't, you know, kill me if I don't remember which one is which. Let me just finish. Um, so, uh, so I make up the packets of the of all the applications for each one of each member of the committee, and I either put them in my garage, which I've done a few times, or I can leave them here in town hall um, for you all to pick up if you want to if you want to review the hard copy. Otherwise, you will have received um, the digital copy, and you can look at it from that. So that's that's how it goes. Okay, Tom, what? Okay, well, uh, following up on uh, Mike's suggestion, which I think is terrific, uh, I, I'd like to attentively make a motion that we follow up on having a permanent, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be January 15th, it can be on a Friday at noon, according to our tradition. Right. But this year, since we are late in starting, obviously we have to push the deadline for applications back. And on your note, uh, you're suggesting, uh, Sally, that we set the deadline for uh, Friday the 28th. That uh, was, of this. That's pretty close, but I think most of the people who are planning on um, applying are usually pretty ready to go. I, I would like to suggest that we push that out in, into February, if that can be possible. I cannot do the first weekend in February. Cannot. Absolutely. All right. I'm not suggesting Can't do the it. first week in February. I was going to suggest February 18th. Okay. Could I? I'm going That's going to make it too far out. Um, one of the things I've noticed is we're the only town that is not doing this within the year. In other words, most of the towns start a little earlier so that we're not um, doing this in the middle of winter, having to put second meetings in and so on and so forth. The historical commission sometimes has to make site visits and we don't like going out in the snow to look at something. <laughs> um, and nobody does really. Um, so, Bringing it a little forward, also the people who need to get matches for this money. All the state deadlines do not coincide at a good time for those applicants. And I hear those complaints constantly. So I'm just speaking from the piece of the committee that gets 75% of the applications. I'd, I'd like to make a future move. I think the idea of keeping the increments the same is perfect. But try to get it out of the midwinter um, and get it a little closer to what everyone else is doing in our, I totally in our county. I agree with that. You know, but the question at hand right now is, is two weeks notice enough to give it out right now? And I would uh, argue it's not enough time to be well, fair to people. Well, the public notices and the public 
everything will go out immediately. I know that, but people really have to be very thoughtful about their applications. And, uh, and I think that- uh, Even if we put it ahead this time, we still have the just constant- Working backwards from yeah. the town meeting, I, I haven't heard a good argument, notwithstanding the mm. fact that the historical group has to, you know, everything that has to go into considering it. Uh, it seems to me that you know, we're on Thursday, we're, the weekend is coming up. So basically uh, people will have about 10 days to prepare it. And I, I don't think that's, you know, uh, that's enough time, frankly. Well, also remember on the far end of that. And Sally just said that uh, first week of February is absolutely out. Uh, I, I respect that. But uh, I think if we, uh, I would suggest then we do it the second week in February. If you think the February 18th is absolutely too late, let's compromise on February 11th. I just want to mention one other thing. The Historical Commission has to meet an additional time because we have to vet the applications first. Then they go to the town council. Right. So there's another extra All right. chunk so in there. And I know some of our commission- Following up on that. Yeah. Okay. If you were to get the applications to review on February 11th, would you need two weeks before it goes to town council? You gotta schedule a meeting, it has to be posted, the whole business, and we have to review. It's a long meeting too. It's like three hours to go through those applications. So it's not just our opinion. We have to match it up with- I understand. So yeah, the budget is, and possibility and- I know. usually do send it to town council ahead of your review. Yeah. And then your review, in effect, follows up. With right, but it, I mean, they, they can have it at yes. any point, but they right. need to have our opinion because right. that, that's no, sort of convince right. their right. time spent trying to figure out if they're gonna qualify. Right, they, but they can, they can review the projects that aren't um, historic. Right. But if, if we know the deadline's February 11th, then you could schedule the, meet, the review meeting sometime the week of February 14th right now. You don't have to wait till you actually get them. I mean, you just put it on the calendar, you know? Uh, you know, I mean, it's- You have to abide by what town council says. Then. And, and frankly, I- or At I, least I, take I, into uh, consideration if what I, if town I'm council says. I have another reason for <laughs> requesting to put it off, because I actually think we should have another public meeting before the deadline, so people can come in and ask questions. Before we are having a public it. meeting. Pardon? We will be having a public meeting. Yeah, I, mean, I say not, before the not, deadline. So I think we, we always have the public meeting. Need to have a Zoom meeting prior to the deadline. Is that so? That's usually why how it goes. We need yeah. a little bit more time than the twenty eighth. We wouldn't be able to to have the application process unless we have the public meeting because that's where people come in to share. Okay, so you and agree ask a we should have a public meeting prior to the deadline. We always do. That's what I thought. It's by the statute. So I don't see that that's not gonna happen. Well, uh, I, I think you this envision that, Sally, when you said that. I just popped that date in because it was a Friday. Yeah, I think and that this was. Is, this is not going any, this, this document, the um, request for proposals, is strictly. I understand that. It's just for talking points, basically. Right. Well, this does go on the website. It will. It has to go on the website because this is the information sheet that goes with the application. Right. And it has not it has not done that yet. This is yeah. just this so is this just is, what I did. I think we need to, you know, just get our increments in I place. I mean I I today. part of why this is so complicated for me is because this first weekend in February is just impossible. I can't even think that weekend. Um and I, I get that, Sally. So um Yes, the what is fifth and sixth, fourth is the Friday. So seven would be the 11th. We could make this Friday that they would need to have their application in the 11th of February. And I could manage that. Thank you. I think. I like that idea. So if we go with that. Did we say the 11th of February? Right. Yes, Jay. That would be the deadline for them to have their applications in. Good. So, I so think that's that, a good idea. Well, then that would be 
but you know, you'd have to have another two weeks before the voting meeting. At right. Least. So you so, have so we're getting way, way at the end of February. And I know that one member of our commission is going to probably be not in town. Possibly good? two of them. I can zoom in. It could be me, but well, yeah, we can you know, zoom. Oh. Zooming is not often handy when you're on a vacay or something. So, um, so if we did the dead, if we did the deadline on the 11th of February, I could manage to. We can have a public meeting between now and then. How about the, having that on the 28th or the 27th? Yeah, we don't, don't need to do a Friday. No. Um, Friday for a, a public or not, not, not a good time. Not a good plan. <laughs> not a good time. Um, I can do January. Yeah. So 20th. So we could do, what's the day today? January the 13th. Yeah, today's just the 13th. So we have next week, and then we have the week after that we could have the public meeting. Do we have to have two weeks notice? No. No, you just need two days notice. And, okay. and it, I have an email list of the people who generally apply, and I have heard from a number of those folks. Um, so I know that they're they're in the pipeline right now as to oh, they want to know the exact dates and um, they're ready they're ready to jump most of them as soon Sally, as do we, do we have june wolf from construct and pine woods on that list i uh, we could i'll make sure she is we have, we have um the housing authority which should probably it's different they're usually in yeah. Court. All right. That's, yeah, that's we can. Different. Well, yeah, I think so. I think so because they have applied a few times. Yeah. yeah. It's important to have them on that list. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They got okay. money last year, Jim. So if, yeah. if the email goes out uh, in the next few days, I, I think if we had our uh, public meeting on Thursday, the 27th, that's exactly two weeks from today, uh, that would allow people uh, a decent amount of time to schedule that. We can do that. Do we have a select board meeting that the 27th? Yeah, it's we have a Thursday 27th select board meeting? Okay. What time so we'd have to do it earlier in the, in the day to use this room. We would have to do it like, like around now, like at four o'clock. Yeah. Or not Thursday. Or not Thursday, right. Or not Thursday. Is there a problem having it at four? Same yeah. day. I think it's better for the professionals to come in. It's just in the past we've done them later at night. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we usually have it at six if we when we, we can't do that. Because on people Thursday. are coming from work, and so then we can't do it Thursday. No, but a lot of people are, are at work when they're attending. You know, all the nonprofits and the housing authority people and the construct people. I mean, they're all basically attending as part of their work function. Right. So I don't have any problem with doing it for, but. You know. Yeah, the, the people who are coming to represent their business yeah. organization That's right. are doing it as part of their work, so yeah. they can mm -hmm. they can get here at four. Is two hours long enough for that meeting? Because we'd probably have to have a hard stop around 6, 6.15. I think so. I, I think uh, we'll keep it moving, because, uh, so they have a chance to, they're not going to give their full program to us then. So the other option would be the 26th or the 28th, but uh, I mean, it's not a good day for a public meeting. I, I think it might be. It's not. What's in no, I said the, the, like the What's in Friday is not a good day. So oh, no, not Friday. Never on a Friday. We could do Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh. There's nothing in this room on the 26th. The Wednesday. Except I work. Oh. Let's just do Thursday at 4, the 27th. Well, Sally, uh, I, I say that we, we do what you're, this is putting a strain on you. So what, what's best for you? Well, I could do later on Wednesday. Which would you prefer, Sal? Or I could do four on Thursday. So I kind of don't, I kind of think it's too bad to run up against the selectmen's meeting. Me too. In case people are still having things that they want to talk about. Um, and I could do, 
I could do six o'clock on Wednesday. Perfect. Okay. Does that work? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And six o'clock on Wednesday, the 26th, for the public meeting? Uh, 26, Sally. Is that what I said? 26th, 6th. That's what you said. I six o'clock I... on January 26th for the public meeting. At, does that work for you guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down. That's okay. Wednesday, the 26th, right? At 6. At 6. Okay. All right. So, public meeting. Wednesday, 26th at 6. Then the deadline is Friday, February 11th at noon. All right? Yep. And then two weeks. And then Monday will schedule yours the next week. So that'll be February the 25th. So that's the week of, is that? Um, that's going to be real late. When does, when do we have to have it into? Um, so you have two parts. One has for to town Friday. warrant. The set of the town warrant would be, we could go all the way up to the last week, the last Monday in April. Oh, oh okay. That's a okay. meeting. The finance committee could schedule a meeting too because they have to approve financial items too. But we could do that all in the last week of April and have that set a time for the May town meeting. That gives uh, that gives Donna over a month to review everything. Right. Yeah, I think that's really think that's enough. Uh, it won't take them that long. No, I know. Just looking whether or not legally. We can fund it, right? Been doing yeah, it. I know. She's been doing this for a while. She whips it out pretty fast. Um. So. So the week of February 21st is probably school vacation week. Is yeah, that an issue? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. For the babysitting the grandparents, it is. <laughs> President's Day. The 23rd, the same day. This is the other. Wednesday, the 23rd. At 6 o'clock. But that's Five. not 14 days from the 11th. 14 days from the 11th is the 25th. Yeah. Up to you. I'd rather start earlier anyway. Well, that's just us. I mean, we, yeah. we don't necessarily, not that we don't welcome, but we don't necessarily have to have public input at that meeting. Okay. It, cool. it just has to be us. The, okay. the public meeting, the one where, where we want the public to be there is, um, is the 26th of January. And so that's, that's an important date for, for people right. who are applicants to be able to be here. Um, good, good, good. But the, our review, it's nice to have the people here yeah. so we can ask them questions, but not necessary. Actually, it's really nice to have them here. <laughs> Well, the, the only problem is we have to absolutely specify that the, the when we meet, we don't have all the applicants. And sometimes they don't give us an email or a phone number, and we right. need to call them sometimes during our deliberations. So I want right. to make sure that um, we emphasize that. Don't leave out stuff over here in the top of your application form. Do they usually do that? I don't remember that they do. Um, well, the historical commission has the biggest burden. Yeah. Lots of times you can tell someone put something together at the last minute and the numbers don't add up or the timeline is completely skewed. So well, technically we need that speaking, content. technically speaking, there if they fill out their project submission sheet correctly, they have we have a telephone and an email. Right. And they will have submitted their project electronically so we'll have an email true for sure true but that might not be i mean our commission may not have the same access to it that offices the microphone oh it should come it'll come to your email it may not come to peter but well, he's the clerk you. it has to come to him um well, 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 let's talk about that. I'm just saying, once we get the procedure and the timing on this, we can so, tighten it. What's the date we're now talking about? 
Okay. All so, right, so the public meeting is January 26th. Correct. At, at six o'clock. Right. The uh, deadline for submission is February 11th at noon. Yes. Right. Then we're going to hit, we're still, we still had not finalized when we wanted to have our public. deliberation meeting. Yes. And that has to, uh, Linda has to be able to review and others committees have to review which, between the 11th and our deliberation meeting, correct? Which could be the 24th. Would that give you enough time, Linda? It does, but only if the members are in town. <laughs> so if we're gonna set the date tentatively for 24th. What time? I think we can do early, if that's good for people, it's four o'clock. That's okay with me. And? Okay. Thumbs up, thumbs 20. down. I can't, we can't hear you. You're muted, I think. Yeah. What, what date are we talking about? We're talking about our review of the project applications. Everyone will have the applications to review. Theoretically, the, the afternoon of February 11th. When I will put packets together and have them either in town hall or in my garage. I don't know if it's easier for people to just fly by my house whenever they can. Um, it I, seems mm. unlikely that we will be in the new house by then. So. <laughs> I think the town hall is a better option, particularly if we just send somebody to pick it up who's not okay. conversant with last, your garage. <laughs> last week it was, or last year, we it was a real problem because somebody <laughs> could come in. Yeah. All right, so um, February um, 11th at noon, I'll run in and put the packets together, sorry, um, on, uh, and have them ready to, for people to pick up um, sometime that afternoon. And if anybody wants to have the applications in my garage, I can do that. I could put, your, put the packet together and put it in my garage. Um, so last year's voting meeting was especially long, and I'm just looking. We do have a 6:30 select board meeting on the 24th. You sure you want to do a four o'clock meeting here? Okay. It was last year. It was easily three hours. You have it on a Wednesday? No, you said the 24th, which is a Thursday. Oh, it is. Okay. So if we do Wednesday, it's fine. All right, Wednesday, but Wednesday it has to be later because I work on Wednesdays. And I don't know if anybody wants to go until 930. Well, earlier, I thought you said you were more inclined to do the Wednesday, so. And the, but that was a different one. That would be the later. We do Friday at four, I don't care. Listen, I'd, I'd rather not do Friday. Okay. So you want to say six on the 23rd for the voting meeting? Yeah, that well, we also said that, oh, that's. That okay. makes for a late night for people. And then your head you. begins to swim after a while. We do 8 a.m. At least mine does. Uh, I would so you, you have a select board meeting on the 24th? At 6.30, yeah. The 24th at 6.30? That's the select board meeting. So we're trying to work around that. And We'll probably want to do Zoom. This is the only room we can do Zoom. Technically, we could probably do it in another room off a laptop, but I know when we're doing that with the selectmen, it's not the best okay. quality. This is the, the best setup for that, especially if you're bringing people in back and forth discussion, I would recommend in this room. Okay. So Sally, were we to meet on the 23rd at six o'clock, that would be Wednesday, it would be after a day of work. Is that just too much for you or? Well, if we're, you know, if it goes to a long meeting by the end of the night, your eyes are crossed. And Did we break it into two meetings last year? Um, we no, always we have, have a backup meeting. No, but I thought we continued to. In case, in case it doesn't go well the we, first we time. We met last year, we did meet on the uh, 5th of uh, March. Yeah, we, and we, I don't know why. Um, something was the 26th was the schedule. I did this for myself because I was trying to remember the uh, increments. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, 26th was a meeting that was canceled, I think. 
whether COVID who we knows. started it and it got so long we decided to continue it. I think Patrick is right. Okay, so we continued the 26th. <laughs> yeah, that's my recollection. Too. Yeah, I think we have to just get a little crowd control there because that, those are long meetings. Um, well, we had all the discussion on the, the money that was in, you know, from years ago last year. I don't think it'll be as long this year. I don't think we have. So do you want to do Wednesday and Thursday? We could do Wednesday at six, six but it's okay with that. Finish it on Thursday at well four if necessary. I think we need to just confine ourselves to the, the time we set. Those other people may not be able to come back for a, okay. a different moment in time, so. But this is not a public, this is less important. This is not our public hearing. This is right. our deliberation. This is no, just us. We're saying that they wanted to be able to have people answer questions. So it is important to the public. Well, you can, again, people have been called uh, during those meetings just to get a clarification, so. So oh. let's set the let's set the final meeting for for the semi final meeting, um, the semi final meeting for February twenty third at six, and then um, oftentimes or we've always set a second meeting for the beginning of March in that week sometime, just in case things go sideways and we need to meet again. Or two weeks later. So we could do the 3rd of March. Okie doke. Is that good for people? Yeah. Oh, so we'll have our backup meeting the 3rd of March. Also at six. I think we could do it's because it's a Thursday. We could do it at four. That's a good idea. Is that a select board meeting? Yeah, but we're, this would be a brief one because it's just in case. Yeah, it's just in case. I think we've only. I don't think we meet the first week of the month. Yes, yeah, so there's no meeting that day. Okay. Okay. So, is everybody good with that? Public meeting, January 26, 6 p.m. Deadline for applications: Friday, February 11th at noon. Um. Re final review meeting or our our review meeting of all the applications February 23rd at six o'clock backup meeting March 3rd at four. Good. Is that good for people? Ann and, Ann and Jay, good? Okay. Fine. That's fine with me. Awesome. I have uh, just one additional question. Uh, I probably should know the answer, but what are the reporting requirements that we ask of people who have made applications in the past? Um, yeah, I so, think I think your answers will you'll get your answers on the request proposals. They're required to um, provide us with an annual report whether or not they have completed their project. Um, they can just say, we didn't start, we haven't finished, or we did finish, it's great, it's awesome, thank you so much, or what whatever. So far in the way of annual reports. For the we have received a bunch of them. We have. Yeah. You know, we got it from the Muncie's, we got one from Donna Hassler, we just got now. Um, we got uh, oftentimes it will accompany the request for okay and i'll go back and check and see make sure we've got it and then they're they're required to say that this project is funded wholly or in part by the citizens of stockbridge under the provisions of the massachusetts community preservation act i don't okay. we've caught we've caught some people with their pants down because they didn't do that yeah. Well, also we didn't pay them because they didn't send the report. Right. And I think that's an important thing. It's not dangling a carrot. It's just good practice fiscally. So. And also we we tell them that they won't get any money the next year if we haven't gotten their report. Yes. And we have to mean that just like yeah, a we do. Deadline. We do. Have we got a hundred percent match this year? I'm 
not sure what we're going to get. According to Stuart, it looks like it's going to be a good year. Yeah, no, we need to confirm the amount. Uh, it looked like it was 100% match, and this and the town gives us what from the tax the, the tax receipts is what like 230 or 240, roughly. Yeah. So if we got if it is 100% match, we have a, a much more significant pot. 214,000. 214. So. There was it was in the paper that we're getting a hundred percent match, and it's also on the, the state website. But I just want to confirm that that's actually true. This is what we got. FY twenty two two fourteen. That's from the state. I mean, from the state. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, and then the, from the town, it's another two fourteen. I didn't look up the town. I just looked up the state. All right. So we need to kind of have the total of the combined pot. What we figured. What we figured last year. Because I've that's on the sheet there. Um, we figured last year the projected income would be two hundred and eighty-five thousand, and that was based on a thirty percent match. So we were really lowballing that. Right, but this also doesn't include some of the things from this. Is this two years ago? Because it doesn't have anything for the housing, uh, the housing trust fund. I mean, that, this isn't last year's total of what we we designated over four hundred thousand last year because we did the clawback. Remember we did all that extra yeah. money that we put in? Yeah, these are the projected, um, these are the, re the, uh, the request, the housing, um, the housing uh, fund was, was separate. This is just what people asked for. Okay, so I have a, just another general question if I could ask. Yep. Which is how people feel about uh, setting money aside for future years, especially for affordable housing space, as opposed to spending down most of what we receive this year in terms of grants. Well, I think we always try and do that. And, and I think if we got 100% match last year, we got a whole lot more money than we... No, we didn't get that last year. Didn't we? No, we, last year, most of the extra money came from the really old um, unexpended. Grants, the unexpended funds that were left over from uh, prior year's grant. If we got a hundred percent match last year, I'll have to go back and look at that. I don't believe we did, but maybe we did. I don't know. Well, okay. the, what you received from the state for FY twenty one was one hundred fifty one thousand. Right. What you received for FY twenty two from the state was two hundred and fourteen thousand. So that was more than we anticipated. Hmm. So we may have a little left over. Is your point? Yeah. And that goes into the general fund, which we can draw on for but, stuff. But to Tom's point, though, if we do assign stuff to the open space bucket or the housing bucket, we can do that, but then we can't switch buckets in the future. Right. So, you know, it just has to stay designated into that lane. But and I, I don't have any problem doing that. I, but I do think maybe that should be on the agenda. Uh, I'd discuss. like to see uh, substantial buckets in all three, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and not to dismiss. Uh, historic preservation, but more of our applications have been for historic preservation than the other areas. So well we have we've allocated fifteen percent. I, I know there's fifteen percent at the very least, but yeah. I'm suggesting perhaps at least. Maybe more yeah. than yeah. No, I I agree. I do think we should hold up on substantive discussions of how we apportion the money until it's on the agenda. Right. Yeah, I, I just yeah. wanted to get a sense of how people felt about it, so that's fine. Okay, so um, I did not go to Cheryl to get the report, which I need to do before we have our meeting, so we know exactly how much money we're going to have for this year. I, I, you know, I'm just not there this I'll year. I'll ask Cheryl Tuesday, because Monday's off, to get you the information. Yeah, and I also need the information from Michael. I'll, I'll, I'll email both of them and get the information from Michael exactly how much money we're going to get from the town. And, and then she can tell us. I always get this really complicated report, which I can't read and I don't understand because I'm really bad at that stuff. So if somebody could just say, you have this much undesignated money in this category, this much on this category, and this much in that category. It would be really awesome because when I'm looking through these spreadsheets of everything that we've done for the last 20 years, it just gives me a headache. 
<laughs> it's always been complicated. And and I can't, I never could understand a single one that I got, and I felt like an idiot, and I wasn't very helpful. I'd like to see the race spreadsheet, the one that's complicated, actually. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I have a copy of that. Oh, okay. Most, most recent. Yeah, good. Good. Well, somebody who's better at figuring all that stuff out can look at that. I just want, I want bottom line. How much money do we have that's undesignated in each one of the, yep. each one of the things? And, you know, I, I need the, I need the spreadsheet for dummies because I'm really, I'm really, I can't read a spreadsheet and I, and I never have understood them and it just, makes me crazy. Could I make just a, a couple comments on the sheets we're going to print? Yeah. I mean, or put on the website. On the funding piece on the uh, request for proposal, the cover sheet, down here in number three says, why is the funding request essential? Not available to government sources, question mark. Um, and how will the CPA funding be leveraged to maximize other government and or private sources? Why not leave out government in that middle sentence? Because uh, it begs yep. the question why it wouldn't be private as well. Yes, but, but just it does scratch. say and or private. Yeah, but that's the second, second sentence. Oh, second sentence. But the, the matching sources, you know, if they say we have it in our annual budget, they're going to tell us that. But just. Okay, so you just want government. You want ditch government and sentence government number gone. two. Okay. Yes. Right. And then. My copy I'm of sorry, the, what's, what's the rationale right for, uh, I see exactly. Right here, right I, here. I, I think there's a, I, I, I think there's a good rationale for leaving that in. Well, then why don't you have private? Pardon? Why don't you have private or other in that sense? Because uh, this is a different bucket. Uh, this is government funding and this, that's different from private. I think you need to keep it simple for the, person who's trying to do one of these because make it clear you're asking do you have any other sources well many people don't realize there are other government sources so I, I wouldn't take out government I think it's important that we encourage people to look so if you want to say other private and government sources that'd be fine but just crossing out government I think would be a mistake okay I'm just saying it's it's actually you know you're saying it twice but not making it clear. Oh. And also in the same vein, I, I'm not sure whether my printed copy is different from what you're looking at on the um, guideline page. It says send digital application to, there's a very long blank, along with 10 copies. You're looking at a different one. That's what I printed from yesterday. Okay, maybe it didn't come up on there. Because we changed color. <laughs> we changed the um, the the uh, email address since last year. Okay. Right. So now it's community preservation commission at stockbridge dash ma dot gov. Okay, I think what happened is that my printer didn't it print it. Yeah, yeah okay. it's probably the color is dead. So okay, fine. So that's the right. accurate address. Yeah. Perfect. And that's, you know, that's really important because everybody can just look at them at home and not, you know, have to worry about You might, I mean, uh, it's a really long email and easy to, uh, and easy to type wrong. I don't know why it's not just CPC app, but it doesn't matter. I have no, that, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. So. Do you want to change? I'm sorry? Do you want to change? I can give John a policy. We can have a change so we can do it tomorrow. Okay, it would be. I can call you tomorrow and confirm that. Yeah. It would probably make people a whole lot happier if it were CPC at Stockbridge dash mass. Yeah. Yeah, we control stock, the end part at Stockbridge right. dash ma dot So we can put anything in front of it. So if you want CPC, 
I think I think that would make a lot of people a whole lot happier. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you can just do that for me tomorrow, but let me confirm first thing in the morning and I'll let you know that. Okay, thank you. So uh, just for, uh, as far as Linda's prior editing suggestion, uh, I take back what I said before. I think it's fine to cross out the first government and leave the second one. Sorry. Okay, we will do that. And I will send in, um, as soon as I hear from you, I'll send in the fiscal 23 uh, project submission and RFP. Um, well, actually, I'm going to be away all day, but I'll get it out as soon as I can. Maybe I'll go home and just do it, and then I can send it if I need to. Yeah, we agree that the uh, deadline uh, the deadline for submission be changed on this form from yes. the 28th. Yeah. It'll be February 20, February 11th at noon. Correct. And hopefully, and hopefully the email will be shorter. Motion to adjourn. Good with me. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. That's pretty good, you guys. Yeah.